it's one of the few things that's just that, that is like unquestionably the standard and you, you can't go wrong with it and it's 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 i it's iconic i i think um you know the sound has has had an impact on the way people look at the way a bass is supposed to sound i suppose and uh and the look of it like you you have to if you're going to design a bass you have to look at the p bass first and figure out okay how do we deal with that you know do we just throw you know throw what is working and everybody loves and is is the way a bass is done out the window and do something totally wacky or just completely copy it or try to try to make a change to it that's going to have uh, a positive impact be a positive change like improve the instrument and you, you can't really do it except for minor things so. The singer of this punk rock band I was in called Christ on a Crutch had traded a keyboard for uh, a 71 red precision bass and then he sold it to me eventually for $200 and uh, I still have that bass and, and all the, the sort of the most important records I've played on in my career as a guy in bands I've, they've, they've, I've played that bass on all those records. I've never played another P bass like it. I, what I've heard was um, the custom shop made me a couple of copies of it years ago. And the neck actually is um, one that was only made for half a year in 1971. If, if this is accurate, this is what somebody from Fender told me years ago. It was made for half a year in 1971 and it was uh, uh, supposed to be a combination or a, an in-between point between a jazz and a precision neck. And I was able to get the action really low because I was still, you know, I was young and still kind of figuring out the instrument and uh, that made it easier to play. And of course, being a young musician in a punk rock band it was all about playing as fast as you possibly could, as many notes as you could get in there. And so having that action really low and it's a really light instrument too, it just made it, it was the easiest bass to play. <laughs> You know, the funny thing is, is that the copies sound better. <laughs> do. Maybe if I mess with the setup a little bit, but uh, there's that. So I'll play those more often. I'll take those out on tour. And uh, that one means so much to me now. I've had it for you know, tw over 20 years and uh, it's got a lot of sentimental value and it's a little bit fragile. So I, I, just, I just keep it in a closet now. <laughs> Brian Baker from Minor Threat, early on when I was a teenager in, in school, uh, and he played a P bass. He's actually more of a guitar player, but he was playing uh, bass on those early Minor Threat records. And uh, he's still probably one of my favorite bass players. Just that, and that for forever was the sound that I I wanted to have. Is the bass sound from Minor Threat's Out of Step record. <laughs> When I first started playing, I, you know, I didn't, I didn't really pattern, I didn't listen to other bass players or, or try to, you know, figure out how to play bass. I just started doing it. And so I looked at it more as like a melodic instrument and would, would miss the sort of more locking in with the drummer and percussive element that is uh, more traditionally associated with playing bass in a rock band. And that was great, it made me, kind of a different player, it made me who I am, it gave us some sort of character to what I was doing. And, you know, over time I've, you know, uh, kind of altered that view and, and, and matured as a player to where, where now I'm, I'm trying to incorporate whatever style I have in with the basics of trying to lock down a song and, and be that bridge between the melodic element and the, and the percussion. I would probably say, yeah, learn the stuff that I didn't learn when I was a kid. <laughs> it's much easier to start off doing things right than have to go back and go to remedial base 101 class. It's tough. So yeah, I would just say, you know, learn a few rudiments and then uh, the best way to become a proficient at an instrument is to play with other people. It's supposed to, like, I think, in, instead of sitting in a room and listening to records or whatever it is, reading out of a book, if you get together in a in a band setting with a group of guys in a garage, you're gonna to have to figure out the way to, to get it done or it's, you're not gonna go anywhere and it won't be any fun. <laughs>